I spend a lot of my spare nights doing deliveries for DoorDash. It's my way of getting extra money while also not needing to commit to a more strict second job. I started driving around 9pm on this night and steadily took on some orders until 11, where it slowed down a bit. During this time, I just drove around the shopping center that had most of the fast food restaurants people often ordered from, and eventually another order came through. It was a regular order to be delivered about 4 miles away. After getting the food, I started the directions to the address and it was almost immediately apparent that it wasn't a house. I scrolled in on the map, which only showed streets and buildings, and the address it pointed to was along a street that had no buildings on it. It looked kind of like an empty plot of land, but the DoorDash map was never that great, so I just started driving and decided to at least check it out and maybe call the customer if there was an issue. I drove out, taking just under 20 minutes until I reached the street it was on. This street was very bare, no houses or crossroads, and no cars driving on it. When I got to the end, it became a gravel road and on the side was a small wooden sign that was too weathered to be legible. I pulled onto the gravel and turned my brights on, and right away I could see something far off down the road. I drove in closer, and as I approached it, my phone dinged to let me know that I'd arrived. In my headlights was a small mobile home, or some kind of RV, and on the door were poorly painted numbers. I looked back at my phone, 2760. It was the address. I got out, holding the food in my hand as I walked up to the RV. Getting closer, it was a bit unsettling to look at. It was overgrown and old, which was strange considering it was a mobile home meant to be moving around. I gave it a knock and waited. This was a rare cash order, which made more sense once I saw the place but it definitely didn't make me feel good having to stand here. As I looked around, an eerie feeling loomed over me. This place was surrounded by the woods with no lights anywhere. Past the RV, it was complete darkness. I heard something from inside and I prepared for them to open the door, but then a voice to my right startled me. I looked over and saw a man smiling at me standing by the corner of the RV. He asked if I had his order, and I nodded, apologizing and walking it over to him. I handed it off and said his total. The man reached into his pocket and pulled out a $5 bill, then smiled again and said he just needed to grab the rest. He turned and walked back around the RV while I stayed where I was. This whole interaction in writing doesn't seem as off as it was in person, but I can tell you, there was something very wrong about this guy. It was just something about the way he acted and said everything that gave me chills. I waited for a minute or so before getting more nervous and looking around the corner to see where he went. In the distance, I saw a figure standing by what looked like the dark outline of a shed. They were not walking, they were just standing there. As the fear grew inside me, my head jolted around, hearing the door to the RV opening. A different man looked out at me, and just as I started to greet him, he slammed the door shut. My heartbeat now intensifying, I looked back out at the man who was by the shed. He was now walking back toward the RV, but had something else in his hands. In the moment, I couldn't tell exactly what it was but it was either a long bat or a rifle. I ran back to the car, getting in and turning it on with shaky hands as I put it in reverse. The man came around the side of the mobile home and stood calmly in the darkness as I drove off. I don't know what happened there, but I wasn't exactly keen on finding out. I went straight home afterwards and debated calling 911 but was caught up on the fact that I didn't actually know what was going on. In the end, I made the regretful decision not to notify the police. Whatever happened that night will remain as just the strange encounter it was, with no answers to the true nature of it.
I work at a 24-hour drive through restaurant, and this had happened only a few weeks ago. I'm a crew manager, but for the most part, I just do the same things everyone else does, which is cook and take orders. For overnight hours, we always have at least two people, one being a manager and the other usually being a cook. On this night, the cook had called in sick, and when I called the others to see if they could cover his shift, none of them said they could. So by 12 a.m., I was the only worker there. Now usually the restaurant doesn't get busy overnight, and more employees come in at 4 a.m., so it wasn't an entire shift alone, but it still meant that for four hours, I had to do everything myself. I left my headset on in case someone came to the drive through then started working on the tasks I had for the night. I started by scraping and cleaning the stovetops, but a few minutes in, I was interrupted by a banging sound from the front of the restaurant. I walked down and looked over the counter, seeing a man standing at the front door and banging on it. Then he pressed his face against the glass and looked inside, scanning the whole room before his eyes set on me. I walked over to the door as he stared at me, and when I got closer, he backed up and waited like he thought I was going to open it. I yelled through the glass that our dining area was closed and that he needed to use the drive through if he wanted to order something. He looked confused, so I yelled again that the doors were locked and he had to use the drive through He showed no response that time, not giving me any idea whether he understood me or not, so I just turned around and walked back to the kitchen. I figured he'd have to get the hint at some point that the doors weren't opening. I continued working on the stovetops, spending at least 15 to 20 minutes on them. Throughout this time, I had gone once to check the front to see if the man had left, and from what I could see, he was gone. The whole parking lot was empty, and the man was not at the door, but it was a couple minutes after finishing with the stoves that I got an alert from my headset that someone was in the drive through I turned on my mic and asked for their order while walking to the window, but nobody said anything. When I got to the window, I immediately saw on the camera that there wasn't a car out there. I looked around the screen and didn't see any movement either, so I ignored it and started walking back. But as I got to the back room, I slowed to a stop when I thought I heard something. I stood in place and listened as footsteps slowly walked above me on the roof of the building. They were careful steps, not making much sound aside from the roof creaking, but I had no doubt that there was someone up there. I followed the sound of their steps with my stare, moving down the ceiling until I saw the ladder leading to the maintenance hatch, and that's when I realized what they were doing. I sprinted over to the ladder and started looking for some sort of lock to keep the hatch from opening, but I'd never even used it, so I had no clue how it worked or if it even locked. Then there was a loud creak from the ceiling directly above me, and a few thuds came from the outside of the hatch. A moment passed, then the hatch creaked open slightly, and through the small gap, all I saw were a set of eyes staring back at me. I sprinted for the front of the building, hearing loud thuds from where the hatch was as I quickly unlocked the door and ran for my car. I called the police as I sat inside and frantically looked through the windows of the restaurant. While on the phone, I saw a shadow moving by the front counter. Then a man appeared, standing in the far back of the restaurant, but was looking in my direction. After a moment, he turned and disappeared behind the kitchen leaving me in a panic until the police made it. They searched inside and outside, going on the roof as well, but the man had already run off. Nothing from the place was missing either. No equipment or money was taken. Nothing. He just broke in and left. I tried to not think about it too much, but it's hard not to come to the conclusion that he was there for me. Like I said, this happened pretty recently, so there's still not much of an update on it. Even with his face on the cameras, there's yet to be a confirmed identity. The owner of the building added a padlock to the inside of the hatch though, which should have been done before, but I guess it was just an inconvenience. 
I still worry about the man's intentions and if he could be watching for me to be alone again, waiting to do whatever it was he tried before. Over the last five years, I've been working at different odd jobs all around the country. I live in a van, so I move around a lot, but a few months out of the year, I have to stay in an area for an extended amount of time in order to rack up some cash before moving on. At this time, I was staying in the Mideast portion of Utah, and I'd taken up a job at a gas station. It was located on a road that was really only used by locals to go in and out of state without having to deal with the highway traffic. There was nothing else on this route. It was simply a road with a lone gas station for the occasional driver to fill up at. That's kind of why it was perfect for me though, because the location of it didn't matter. Since I lived in a van, I could easily stay out there for an extended amount of time and work. Anyway, I'd been there for a bit over a month and up to this point, I was still working random shifts. This day I was working 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. It was really not a special night by any means. No customers aside from a few stopping by the pumps, and not much to do as far as stocking or anything. I was mostly standing around on my phone, or pacing around the store and making the shelves look nice. Then at 1 a.m., a customer pulled into the station, parking in one of the few spaces right in front of the door. Knowing they must be coming inside, I went back to the counter. A man got out and came into the shop, looking over and smiling at me, then giving me a nod as he turned down one of the aisles. He started whistling as he looked at a couple things, picking them up and putting them back, then continuing down the aisle and repeating this. I wasn't sure if he was just taking a break from driving, or if he actually needed something, but the items he was picking up and looking at were all different, and he didn't actually seem interested in buying them. Then he abruptly stopped whistling, walked over to the door, and left. I didn't think he stole anything, but it was strange. He got into his car and started moving around, reaching into his back seat before getting back out of his car and coming into the shop again. After seeing that, I wasn't feeling too comfortable. This seemed almost exactly how I thought an armed robbery would begin like, but the aggression I was expecting when he came back in didn't happen. He walked over to the counter and asked how my night was, starting a quick back and forth of small talk. I acted as normal as I could, just in case I was overthinking everything, but then he asked if I could help him with his car. He said his tires needed air and that he didn't see any pumps outside. This station didn't have any air pumps for self-use, but we did carry a handheld air compressor for emergency situations. I got it out and followed him to his car. He pointed down at the tire that needed it and I ducked down, putting the compressor line in. I had it in for less than 10 seconds before it read the pressure to be at the right level. I looked over at the man, seeing him looking down at me with no expression. I took everything out and stood up, starting to walk back to the shop when he stopped me by rushing in front of the door. His right hand was deep inside his jacket pocket as he stared at me with a cold face. I told him to move, but of course he stayed in front of the door, though I could see it in his eyes that he was preparing to do something. I took a step back, trying to say what I could to calm the intensity of the situation, but just as I thought he was going to snap, he suddenly ran around me and got in his car, pulling out aggressively and speeding away. I took this time to go inside and call 911, and surprisingly, they arrived out here only minutes later. They were already on the chase, looking for the exact car the man was driving. The officer stated the man was on the run from a recently committed crime near the border. They didn't give me any details, but the way they said it made me think it wasn't just some small robbery. After my quick statement, they got on the road again, and after that, I never got an update. I tried to look up recent crimes and everything, but could not find anything useful. I don't know what he was planning to do, or why he actually stopped at the station 
but my best guess could have been to steal my van and conceal his tracks, or at least delay them. However, depending on what crime he had just committed, I think my life could have easily been at risk, and why he chose not to do anything to me is unknown.